Welcome back, everybody, to Imperion Galactic Survival. This is the Getting Started tutorial, and we're on part uh, 12, I think. Yeah, part 12. <laughs> oh, man. It's funny. I'll tell you what, guys. I had this idea. You know what? I think I'll make a tutorial series, and I figured it would probably be about, like, four videos. <laughs> We're on 12 and we're not even, we still have more stuff to cover. So, um, I've been, I really appreciate all the comments and the feedback I have been getting uh, on this, uh, tutorial series and, uh, just appreciate, uh, you know, everybody watching and, you know, people, you know, providing, uh, extra input and, you know, just, you know, saying how much it's useful and going to be useful to them and all that. So really appreciate that guys. That's really kind of what it's, what it's all about. So, um, thank you very much for that. So kind of along those lines too, we have some, um, we have a couple more um, notes and corrections and comments and stuff that people have left that I want to cover with you guys. Uh, but our main goal for this episode is to equip our base. Um, and then, you know, if we have time left over, which I'm sure we won't because we always go too long, but if we do have time left over, um, we will, um, we'll figure out what else we're going to do. But that is the main goal uh, for today. Okay. So let's look at a couple of notes. Um, I, it was confirmed to me by a, a comment that you can't uh, recover materials from just from just normal concrete. Um, especially, I wasn't quite sure, but especially, I guess, if you're using a salvage tool, or maybe you can't at all. You know what we could do, actually? Let's, let's try something here. Uh, I still have the two cheated-in multi-tools, um, but we're not really going to use those unless I need to demonstrate something specific. Uh, to you that requires those we'll, we'll keep using the survival tool until we can actually make a multi-tool legit or we find one but this is the best multi-tool the tier two and so let's just uh and notice that in my inventory there's uh, we don't have any um here let's uh, let's turn that into a no 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 not that well too late now uh, we'll turn that into a, a protein bar let's just confirm this so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to lay out like a, a row of blocks here. And we're gonna just salvage each one of these with the multi-tool and see if we get any materials at all. I don't think we will, but we might. Let's try it. Oh, we do, look at that, we got some cement. Okay, so we, we got six cement and I think I laid six blocks down. So I wonder if it's more of a situation with the, I've got the cheat menu on for a second here too. I wonder if it's more of a situation with the tool. So let's let's lay another six blocks out here. And what I'm gonna do is try this with the normal survival tool and let's see what happens. Okay, so this is the normal survival tool. Let's put it on salvage. Ah, look at that, we're not getting anything. We didn't get anything at all. So it looks like that that you can't get any material back from normal concrete unless you're using the tier two survival tool, in which case you get one thing of concrete back per block. I interesting. Okay, let's try one more little test again, just to reconfirm something. Um, I'm going to I'm going to do the little. Um, I want, to, I want to make sure this part's not connected to the building. But let's do the little break the blocks thing and then pick up the rest of it kind of idea. And it, I'm guessing it probably won't matter if we use the tier two, but it might. So let's try this. Okay, so we're going to, um, we're going to salvage the first block. And then we're going to just pick up what falls and see if we get anything more. Okay, here we go. Okay, now we're going to pick this up. And we didn't get anything more. Okay, so it does look like for normal concrete blocks, and I was also told that it also applies to wood, excuse me, and blocks that are made from carbon substrate. Um, so in that case, all right, hold on a second. I've got a call that I've got to take. I'll be right back, you guys. Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, that was a, a work call and had to take it. So um, speaking of which, too, um, you know, I've... Uh, I've been staying, you know, pretty busy uh, all throughout the COVID crisis with my job because fortunately, you know, most of what I need to do, I can do from home um, and things are kind of ramping up uh, on the work front for me. So I might not be able to continue, you know, releasing uh, videos every single day. 
And, you know, but I will, I will definitely continue the series and we'll finish this series as, as far as um, I feel like we should take it. And I'm not even <laughs> really sure where we're going to end it, but we, we got more to cover for sure. Um, but all that to say, uh, I might not be able to release, you know, a video or multiple videos every single day moving forward. It might, you know, we, we might have to, it might be every other day or every third day or something, but, you know, I'll do the best that I can to keep these coming out until we actually finish the series. Okay, so enough about that. Um, so what we were talking about, we were talking about wood blocks, normal concrete blocks, and carbon substrate blocks. What I've been told um, is that you can't recover any material from those uh, in the case where, you know, you break a portion of it and then you try and pick the portion up. Okay, so that appears to be the situation uh, with those types of blocks. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick this up again. Yeah, see, we didn't get anything for it. So I'm pretty sure that that is how that all works. All right, let me see. I think we might have, I got to tab out here for a second. I think we might have one or two other things to cover in our notes here. Uh, yeah, okay. The other thing I wanted to talk about uh, now is one, uh, one of the comments that I had talked about placing an initial placing of the core. Now, when I placed the core down for this building, I, I pretty much just put it right on, on top of the surface. Uh, but one of the comments I got was that you can sink the core down a little bit into the ground. And uh, in doing so, remember, if you guys remember in the last episode, I had to put another layer of blocks down here to kind of fill in that gap. Um, but what we could have done, and it just didn't occur to me at the time, is we could have actually sunk the core down in the ground a little bit further so that you know, the front of the house would have been at ground level or maybe even just a little bit below it. That's super easy to do. And it actually also segues into something else that I want to show you guys too that I didn't uh, show you when we talked about the views. So I went ahead and cheated in another building, a base starter block here. So let's just grab that. And we're going to kind of go over here away from, uh, you know, the main base. So let's say that I want to set this core down. Right now, if I just set it down, it's going to pretty much be right on the surface of the ground. But if I press the page down key, look what happens. I can actually sink it down into the ground a ways. And I, I, again, I might want to do that if I'm in, you know, on uneven terrain and I want to try and get my foundation, you know, all flush with the ground with no gaps. Okay. Um, so, so you do have that ability to do that. And I can press page down as far as more or less the top of the block is going to appear uh, on the ground itself. So likewise, you know, you can move, and, and this is what I said about segwaying something else. You can move pretty much anything in the game up and down with page up and page down. We did talk a little bit about that um, when we covered, you know, block placement and stuff like that. But um, um, I think that, you know, that comment was a really good comment because it, that is something that you might actually want to do, you know, sink it down a little bit. The other reason you might do that is if you didn't want like such a large rise in the foundation to where, you know, you put the ramp down. Okay. And I'm not saying you should or you shouldn't use a ramp. It's really just kind of up to what your preference is. Okay. So page up and page down. Now let's continue for a moment talking about page up and page down as it relates to to views. This is actually really important and I'm surprised I kind of didn't talk about it. I should have, but I didn't. So we're going to, we're going to correct that right now. Let's get into our hover vessel for a second. Now we learned that, and, and everything I'm going to show you also applies to vessels, small vessels and capital ships and that sort of thing too. So we learned the other day that the V key, if I toggle the V key, it just switches back and forth between first person and third person. We also learned that if I press the left alt key, then it takes me into camera view mode and I can pivot around my, um, you know, whatever, whatever my position happens to be at the time. Okay, so we learned about all of that stuff. But one of the things I didn't tell you and I should have told you, but I just didn't think about it is... Um, how you can also change your height um, and your distance. I might have covered distance. I don't remember if I did. We're going to cover it again just in case I didn't. But we also want to cover height too. That's really important. So here's the thing. If I want to change the distance of my camera, um, you also use the left alt key for that. And then you simply use the mouse wheel and you can zoom in or you can zoom out as to whatever your preference is. Okay, along with that, 
and once you you know once you get your zoom the way you want it then just press alt again and then it locks it in place okay so anytime you're in free camera mode not only can you pivot around your vessel but you can also zoom in and zoom out um Capital vessels can be very large and may require you to zoom way the hell out in order to see the whole ship, um, you know, from that third person view. And, and, and as you can see, you can really zoom a long, long ways out if you wanted to. Okay. There might be a... <laughs> That's like really far out, isn't it? Um, there might be a key to insta zoom in and out. Uh, if there is, I'm not sure what that would be. So if you guys know that, that's another good tip that you can leave us in the comments. For Pete's sake, I've got another work call. I'll be right back. Goodness gracious. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> I keep getting these work calls and it's after hours, <laughs> but sometimes that happens. Um, all right, so what were we talking about? We we're talking about zooming. So yeah, if you hold the Alt key, you can um, zoom in and zoom out. Uh, I was mentioning <clears throat> that if there is a, a hot key to do that instantly, uh, if you guys know about that, let me know, because I don't even know if there is one. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, get used to a lot of working that uh, mouse scroll wheel when you have to really scroll out on those large capital ships. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you is um, basically what I kind of refer to as your crosshair placement. So let's go into first person. Um, no, I'm sorry, not first person. This is a third person thing, too. So we need to kind of get into a spot where we can see the crosshair um, better. Maybe we'll go, kind of go up against the building here. And let's turn the light off, too. Does that help at all? Okay, actually, yeah, the crosshairs, um, as I'm currently looking at it, is actually inside the ship. So this is a good illustration of this. So... You can adjust your crosshair. You, you have to be in, in third-person view, first of all. Um, and so, you know, so, so that you can see how this works, right? So you have to be in third-person view. Sorry, my, my brain's not working correctly, as usual. <laughs> um, so what I can do is I can use the page up key and see what's happening. It's raising my camera above the vessel and also raising the crosshair at the same time. So you can page down, you can go way down below if you want to, though I've never actually done that myself. Um, could be useful, I guess, if you're trying to shoot stuff on the ground, maybe, I don't know. Um, or up. So what I usually like to try and do is, if I'm when I'm in third person, I like to put the crosshair, you know, just directly above the vessel. Not, not you know, touching it, but just above it. So that way, you know, if I'm going along in third person and I want to shoot at something... It's in a comfortable uh, position for me. Um, if uh, the crosshair is like way the hell up in the air here, you could certainly use it that way to shoot at something, but I don't know, it just it seems a little off to me. Um, so yeah, page up, page down will allow you to adjust your height, the height rather, of your camera when you're in fixed camera third person mode. Um, if you're in free camera mode, it still works, of course, in free camera mode too, but uh, it's more really of a third a third person type thing because when you're in first person mode, your crossbow your crosshair rather is just gonna appear right in the center of your hood like it normally would. And page up, page down doesn't do anything. Okay, so I think guys that covers all of the tips and comments that I've received since the last video. And once again, really appreciate everybody's participation uh, participation in that and you know helping us out with uh, some of those extra good ideas. Cause you know, nobody, I don't care who you are, nobody knows everything. You know, you can take the most experienced Imperion player or what it, you know, you whatever game it is, and there's still things that we all can learn. And I already told you guys at the very beginning of this series that I'm not an expert anyways. I'm an experienced player, but I'm not a perfect know everything there is to know player. So I still learn new things too, which is good. That's actually a good thing. Okay. so. Let's go ahead and park our hover vessel here. We'll just take it around the front and park it by the tent here. And I'm going to cut the power. Oh, one other thing to keep in mind, too. When you're in a vessel um, and you're in third-person or first-person view and you exit it, you will remain in whatever that view is that you happen to be in. So um, just kind of keep that in mind, too. Okay, so our main goal for this episode is to... Um, equip our base and we're going to use 
you know, we're, we're because this is a getting started, uh, you know, tutorial. We're going to use the tools that we normally would have at this stage in the game. So we're going to trash the core. I'm going to trash both of the normal multi tools. We can always bring them back in later if we need them for anything in particular. Uh, but for now, we're going to get rid of all of that stuff, and we're just going to work with what you would typically have, um, you know, when you're first starting out here in the game. We've got some buried corn dogs there. So let's get, um, this is my second multi-tool. Oh, you know what? That reminds me of something else, too. I'll go ahead and, and share this with you. Notice that I can make multiple multi-tools, or I should say survival tools. You can make as many as you want to because it's free. It doesn't require any resources. So what some people like to do is they like to make a couple of these, and what they'll do is they'll put, say, like, let's say it's, it's very early game. We just landed in our in our escape pod, for example, and we don't yet have these weapons, um, what you can do is you can make a couple of these, and the first one you can set to defense mode, and the second one you can set to um, resource drill mode, and so this one's always on drill, and this one is always on defense. The rationale behind that is that it's quicker um, to switch you know, let's say you're drilling something and then all of a sudden you get attacked by something. Um, it's quicker to hit the one key and switch over to this than it is if you only had one. You're drilling and you right click and switch to this. You know what though? I, now that I'm looking at that, I'm not sure if I agree with that. You guys tell me what you think, okay? Let's try it both ways. So this is how long it takes for me to switch from drill mode, uh, or rather, I'm sorry, this is how long it takes for me to switch from the second multi-tool in drill mode to the first multi-tool in defense mode. So I'm drilling along, something attacks me, I hit the one key, notice how he has to holster the weapon first and bring the other one up before he can start firing. Let's do that uh, all in one fell swoop, okay? I'm drilling. Something is something's attacking me. I hit the one key, it brings up, and then I start attacking. Okay? So what would you guys say? That took about maybe a half a second, three quarters of a second to make that change. One banana, two banana, three banana, four, almost a second to switch. Now compare that with just having the multi-tool, the survival tool by itself. Um, in drill mode, something's attacking me. I hit I hit the right mouse button, switch to defense mode. Well, I kind of missed it there, so let's try it again. Something's attacking me. Right click, switch to defense mode, and fire. I boy, I I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, choosing the 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 single multi tool right click method as a faster way to make that switch because we don't have to holster the weapon first and bring the new one up. I suppose. The one thing about it, though, is you do have to make sure you get that right click down quickly. But that is faster, guys. As long as you get the right click down correct and you don't miss it like I did the first time, that's actually faster than doing this and then that. I think, anyways. So, anyway, just wh whatever... <laughs> Whatever you guys think works better for you. That's really what it boils down to at the end of the day. If you would prefer one that's always set to defense mode on, you know, slot one or two, whatever slot you want to use, and one that's always in resource drill mode, by God, do it all, you know, more power to you. Um, but I think I'm going to continue just using one multi-tool when I start out in these games because, I mean, I think that's just maybe like a quarter of a second faster. <laughs> it's probably not that big of a deal one way or the other. Okay, let's go ahead and drop the second multi-tool. Or no, actually, we'll, let's trash it. Okay. So, boy, it's taken us... How how long does it take us? Like, frickin' half the episode just to, just to cover the, the tips and tricks. That's a good thing, though. Good, they're, they're all good tips. So, we are, we have built our base, and now it's time to equip the base. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure we can make everything that we need to make in terms of our skills. So, if I tap the F3 key, 
or if I'm in my inventory and I just click the tech tree button up here, either way is fine. Um, F3 is a little faster though, if you're not already in the menu. Um, I want to make sure that I'm on the base tab and I want to make sure that I have everything that's required to get your, your beginning base started. So that means we need a generator and we need a fuel tank. Um, and really, it also means we need a small constructor. I mean, I can start the base with just a generator and a fuel tank if that's all I have points for, but I'm not really going to be able to do anything else until I get this small constructor made because the small constructor is the item that allows me to start making more advanced things, including the large constructor. Okay, excuse me. So, um, so we want to make sure we have those things. Now, we already went through the tech tree, I don't. I think it was maybe two episodes, three episodes ago, I can't remember now, but I did go through this, and we did decide to do the fuel tank, the generator, the small constructor, the food processor, and the solar panel. So that way we can, you know, we can get our base started with the equipment, okay? Um, we have the ability, or rather we have unlocked the ability to learn the large constructor, but we don't have the points, so we're going to have to wait until we hit the next level before we can bring in the large constructor. But this is the guy that we really are working towards because once we get the large constructor, then that really opens up a lot more um, equipment and items and weapons and whatnot um, for us to, to advance in the game. Okay, so at present, all we have to work with is our portable constructors. But we've already made the generator and the fuel tank. Um, so I think... Hmm, I thought I had queued up a small constructor, but I guess I didn't. I guess I didn't. Okay, so let's go to our constructor that's, you know, our general purpose make everything kind of instructor, uh, constructor rather. We're going to select the base and we're going to go to equipment and we're going to tell it to make us a small constructor. <laughs> now, I usually, in my let's plays, I usually only make one of these. And as soon as I can, I then make a large constructor or maybe even a couple of large constructors. Keep in mind, though, that you can um, you can salvage large constructors, you know, from wrecks and other things. And one wreck in particular that's related to the story mode called the Heidelberg um, has a constructor that you can salvage on it. So usually what I'll do is I'll I'll make that small constructor and I'll either then make a large constructor if I have the resources and or I will go to the Heidelberg and salvage the large constructor that is on that wreck. I don't want to talk too much about the Heidelberg because it's directly tied in with the storyline, and that's something I'm going to leave for you guys to discover on your own. Okay, so let's put um, let's put our weapons back in place. And um, make sure they're loaded here. That could have been a bad thing, not, ha not having my weapons loaded. And... Uh, so yeah, this so this thing's making here. Here's a little kind of glitch or bug in Imperion. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but when I first opened this up just a moment ago, it appeared like it was done. But then I opened it again, and in fact we saw that we had a little more time on it. That's been kind of a bug here in the game for several alphas now. I don't know if I've talked about that already or not, but if I haven't, yeah, it's just it's 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 not a big thing. It's a big deal. It's kind of it's just kind of irritating because you you know you queue something up. And then you go to look at it, and it shows like it's actually done when in fact it isn't. And what you have to do is get back out and get back in. There's even been a, t a t you know a few times when I've had to do it twice to actually see where it's at. So it's a minor thing, you know. It's not a game-breaking thing by any ch any stretch of imagination, but it is kind of a pain in the ass. Okay, so we have our three really important things, and we're ready to start putting our base together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the wireless with this container and I'm going to put the generator and the fuel tank and the small constructor which is still out here um, right here yeah on that toolbar okay so when you're placing your generator and your fuel tank you need to know something important about those two devices they will actually hurt you <laughs> <laughs> okay, the generator, it gets really hot, and the fuel tank actually emits harmful radiation. I mean, it's not a situation where if you walk in front of the fuel tank, you're going to be insta-killed, but you will start 
taking radiation. So what does that mean? It means that ideally we want to place these devices somewhere where they're going to be out of the way um, and not, you know, not cause us problems. One way that you can do that is you can place them up high, right? So I can actually place the fuel tank way up here. Remember, I can't place it all the way up against the ceiling because remember, we use those plate blocks for the ceiling. And I told you in that last episode that whenever you do that, you have that gap there that the game still considers a whole block, right? But what I can do is I can pop, uh, plop the uh, fuel tank up here. And then I can also take my generator and I can also put it up way up on the wall. So that way it's not, you know, it's not really close to me and I'm not going to have any major problems with it. Okay, so look, we select the generator, but right now the generator is on the vertical axis. And I, what I want to do is I want to take the bottom of it, which is this little honeycomb grid thing. And that's what I want to actually stick up against the wall. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the home and end keys to pivot the generator this way then we're going to change the axis to this axis the pink one and then we're going to pivot it this way so that we can butt the thing up against the wall and now i've got those two items set up high and they might affect me down here but they probably won't they won't affect me as much as if they were right on the floor and i was standing right in front of it so yeah, you can put these up high like I've done. You can bury them in the floor if you want to. Um, that's also another viable way of handling these things. It's really kind of up to you. One thing to keep in mind about your base is you really don't need physical direct access to just about anything because you can access just about anything from the control panel. That, that's the P menu that we often refer to, but it's the control panel. P for control panel right so um for example if i need to fill up my fuel tank i don't have to go up to it directly and open it up to fill it though i can i mean if it is accessible to me i can do that what i can do instead is i can just open the p menu and find the fuel tank and i can access it from here to fill it up or in this in the particular case of the fuel tank you can also access it directly from the main menu so you can access your oxy tank your fuel tank and your pentaxa tank, which on a base is used for your shield. It's fuel for your shield, which we'll talk about that later. That's not something you're going to deal with in the early game because it's more a more advanced thing. Um, but I can access these things directly from here. Um, other things, though, like, for example, the constructor, which we'll put down next, um, you can also access from the P menu. So the whole point in all of that is don't think that you have to place everything in such a way that you have to physically access it. There's nothing wrong with doing that if it makes sense. And, you know, I'm a little bit old school in that I do kind of like to be able to actually access my constructor, but I don't really have to do it that way. The game doesn't force me to do it. That's really kind of more my preference. Now, it kind of used to be that way a long time ago in the very early game uh, before wireless and all that, you know, was in the game. You kind of did need to access some things directly, but that's really no longer the case. Okay, so... We now have our generator and we have our fuel tank down. Now what we want to do is set down our constructor. Now again, I could set this way up high if I wanted to, but I want to be able to access this directly just because I'm an old school guy, okay? So I'm going to put this guy right here for now. We could put it somewhere else if we wanted to. And remember, we can, you know, once we get a multi-tool, we can move stuff around too. But remember, very, very, very important. In the early game, when all you have is a survival tool, you cannot pick something back up whole once it's placed. So just keep that in mind when you're building your first initial base. Wherever you set this, that's where it's going to stay until you get a multi-tool or unless you're willing to destroy it or, or salvage it, I should say, and only get a portion of the materials back and have to remake it, which sometimes you have to do. All right, cool. Now... Here's the next thing that we want to know about using equipment that requires you to put something in it and that it will output something, like a constructor or like a food processor, for example. The way the game works is that you have to assign an input device, or rather an input container, and optionally an output container to the device. 
It used to not be that way. It used to be just like the, the uh, portable constructors currently are, where I just put everything inside the actual portable constructor and then it, it has a little place that it can output those items. But once we start working with the small constructor, the large constructor, and the advanced constructor later on, we have to have some kind of a container in our base to assign as the input device and optionally the output device, okay? So here's what I will usually do in the very early game. I will usually have a container that I've put down because we already learned how useful that is. I can put, you know, like a bunch of blocks into it and then connect to it wirelessly and use those blocks to build the base. Remember, I think I showed this to you. If I didn't, without the wireless menu, I can only hold six blocks at a time. That means that if I have all those blocks you know, outside somewhere in a portable constructor, I, I grab five, I come out here, I lay them down, I go back to the portable constructor, I grab five more, I come over here, I lay them down, I go back to the portable constructor, I grab five more, I come over here and lay them down, etc., etc. So really, you know, it, you really want to make uh, an actual cargo container as soon as you possibly can, uh, which means that as soon as you have a core down and a couple blocks to put it on, you can make one of these and you should do that. All right? Um, so... I can also use this container as my initial input and output device. And the way that I do that is I go to the constructor and in this little drop down, I will see any containers that are currently set up or attached to the base. And then I just select that one. And what that does is it sets this container as my input device and it'll automatically also set it as the output device if I don't specify a different output device. Right now, I can't because this is the only container we actually have, but we will fix that in a little while. Once I have assigned my container, now I have the ability to start making things. And of course, as you can imagine, the container must have inside of it the resources that the constructor requires to make whatever it is that you want to make. So guess what we're going to do now? We're going to go ahead and wire, wirelessly connect to our container, which is our only container at the moment. And we're going to go out to our main um, portable constructor. And we're going to grab all of this stuff and put it in our main container. And what I will usually do at this stage now is I will take this constructor that I've been using here all along now. I'll put as much in my own inventory as I can hold, which looks like I can grab all of it. And I'll relegate that one back to also making biofuel along with the other ones. Or more blocks if I need to make more blocks. Because once you have the small constructor, you don't really need the portable constructor any longer. Okay? Little side note about these portable constructors. They're free in terms of power. Everything that I do in my base is not free in terms of power. I must, I have to have fuel in order to use this. And we're going to talk about powering on the base in just a moment. But these guys are free. They have, um, they must have like a little nuclear fission something or other generator inside of them. I don't know, but they're free and they don't cost you anything in terms of power. So keep using these even after you have set up your actual constructors, your bigger constructors, because they're super useful. In fact, to my knowledge, I could be wrong about this, but to my knowledge, these are actually the most efficient devices to use to make fuel in the later game, Promethean packs in particular. So once we get to the point where we start mining up a bunch of Promethean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Promethium and I'm going to come out here and divide it amongst these four constructors and have these guys make my fuel packs because guess what? It doesn't cost me anything to do that. It's free, right? The power to make it is free. So they're still very useful even later on in the game. Don't ever get rid of your portable constructors. All right, so we have set up our three most important devices. We've got our Jenny, we've got our fuel tank, and we've got our small constructor. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and power on our base. But to do that, we need fuel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to my large constructor. Excuse me. I'm going to go out to my portable constructors that I've been making sure that I have um, continue having uh, 
making biofuel costly, which I've not done a good job of because I've been too busy blabbing to you guys. But what I really should do is I should always, as much as I can, you know, make sure these always have wood in them and they're always making fuel for me or blocks if that's the, the case. Okay. Um, so what I, what I would do right now, you guys, if I wasn't doing a tutorial, if I was playing this for realsies, I would stop right now. I'd jump in this thing, grab my chainsaw, and go out and cut a whole shitload more of wood and continue to have these things producing biofuel. Okay? That's what I should be doing, but I'm not because we're doing a tutorial right now. I will probably, when I'm done recording this, I'll go out and grab a bunch more wood and keep those things going off camera. Okay, so I've got the fuel. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be, you know, just stand anywhere near the base, inside the base, outside the base, looking at it, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to press the P key for control panel. I'm going to select the main tab, okay? And this is where I can fuel the base. Now, here's something that's really weird about Imperium. I've never really been able to figure out why this happens, but if I click fill all, it doesn't do anything. For whatever reason, the game does not let you automatically fill the tank with biofuel, but it will work with promethium packs and later on fusion cells. But for whatever reason, it doesn't let you use the fill all key for biofuel. I don't understand that. I don't know why that is. I don't know if there's a reason for it or if it's, or what the deal is. So if you guys know if there's an actual reason for that, let us know in the comments. So how do I fuel my base? Well, then I just click this manage button. And what that does is that actually opens up the fuel tank. And then I take my fuel and I simply drag it over the box that says fill fuel and click on it and it'll fill this all the way to the top assuming I have enough biofuel to do it. Okay, now I've got a full tank of fuel. Beautiful. The last thing to do is to turn the base on to start the power flowing. The very quick and easy way to do that is to simply press the Y key. And we've got power. Okay. Um... The other way to do it is to press the P key for control panel, and you can also power your base on with this little switch here. But Y is much faster. Be careful. Be careful. If you accidentally, not meaning to, tap the Y key on your keyboard and you didn't mean to, guess what's going to happen? All your base is going to power down. If you didn't realize you did that, and then you go off into the wild blue black yonder and conquer the Xerax, and then come back a few hours later... You might have all of your spoo your food and your crops ruined and your food spoiled. <laughs> okay? Uh, yes, I am speaking from experience. Be really careful about that Y key. Make sure you don't accidentally shut the power down on your base when you did not mean to do so. Or you could have problems when you get back. An, an even more severe problem is if you happen to uh, be getting attacked. Um, which, on a single-player game, the enemy's not going to attack your base unless you're around. So if I'm out on the moon, the Xerox isn't in the meanwhile going to come to my base here on the planet and destroy it. But as soon as I enter the play field, then if there's a Xerox attack imminent, then it's going to happen pretty quick. So, you know, it could, I, I've even seen it to where, you know, I'm coming down back into, you know, atmosphere from being out, you know, up in orbit or on the moon or wherever. And the damn guys are at my base already attacking even before I get to the base. That doesn't happen very often, but it can. And that also, um, you know, that that is affected by how close your base is to the enemy's drone base on the planet. Because the drone base is kind of like their master headquarters, and that's where all the, the nasty drones come out of to try and attack you. Okay? So, anyway, all that to say... You don't want your base powered down when the Xerox are attacking you, because guess what's not going to work? Your turrets and your shield. <laughs> okay? So be really careful. I, I, I kid you not. It's really easy to do. I've done it. Everybody else who's an experienced player who's watching this video now has done it, whether they admit it or not. Yes, you have. Just admit it. Um, and, and just watch that, okay? Uh, it, it's even a bigger pain in the ass on a multiplayer server, because if you're playing with four or five of your buds... You know, maybe it's your bud that accidentally hit the Y key and he doesn't realize it and you don't realize it. And then all of a sudden your base has lost power and you've lost your crops and the Xerox are attacking and, you know, blowing the shit out of everything because you have no defenses. So just be careful of that. Okay, I probably spent more time on that than I should have, but it is, it is a thing. All right, guys. So we have power. 
we have a small constructor. We have a fuel tank. Let's check something out. If I stand right underneath these guys, am I good? Looks like it. Yeah, so it looks like it's far enough away to where it's not going to cause me heat issues or radiation issues. So yeah, keep those things as much as you can. Keep them out of the way so you're not standing... Uh, you know, it looks like if you have one block of space between you and the device, you're okay. But if if there wasn't, like if I do this, yeah, it's it's not keeping me close enough to it to to see really a difference. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Do you see that? See how all of a sudden I started getting radiation and temperature? Um, yeah. So it looks like if you keep one block between you and the device, you'll be good to go. Okay, so. We have now a small constructor. This guy is more capable of making cooler stuff than the little portable constructor is capable of making. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look and see what the new cool stuff is. One of those really cool new things is a, 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 a multi-tool. But remember, even though I can make the multi-tool from here, can we make that? I don't think we can make that in here anyways, can we? Let's look. Yes, we okay. So you can make the multi tool in here, but remember, it's Promethium is the is the thing about that that you have to be careful of. Don't bother learning or making the multi tool until you have Promethium to fuel it. Um, okay, so yeah, forget about forget about that. But look, we we now have like mini gun turrets that we can make, and we can make rockets, and we can make drill uh, mechanical drills with this assuming you know we have the skill we can make a sniper rifle Ooh, i like sniper rifles uh let's make one of those actually we'll make a sniper rifle and we'll queue up let's see there's an output count of 15. let's just make like maybe 30 rounds of sniper okay uh so a lot more stuff and then if we look at the equip or rather the devices menu um then we also have a lot more things that we can make in here so we can make things like for example a, a water generator we can make large refrigerators we can make food processors um, we could make um, generators for like HVs and small vessels uh, and doors. We can make switches and just more stuff basically than you can make in the portable constructor. Uh, we can make detectors and then, you know, everything that you see down here that's kind of shaded, um, you know, blue uh, with the padlock, it means that we can't make that yet because we haven't learned those items yet. Okay. Um, so we, we're, we're, we're moving up in the world a little bit. So probably, you know, the thing I want to do now is I want to kind of take stock of my resources. We took the time, uh, in the last couple of episodes to mine up a nice supply of silicon, a really nice supply of silicon. That's a lot of silicon for right now, a very good supply of copper and a pretty decent supply of iron. In addition to that, we have a few other components um, you know, that we've looted or, you know, along the way or from taking a few things apart from salvaging and whatnot. So we've, we're doing pretty good. So now what I want to do is I want to start thinking about um, food production. And I also want to start thinking about maybe some solar power. And I want to think, think about wireless connections. So the priority on that, I mean, they're all kind of important. I would say probably your, your, your food production might be the most important thing. But be careful... Because look, I am on the all objects filter, and if I'm not paying attention and I queue up one of these little guys, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a refrigerator that works on an SV or an HV, but it's not going to work in my base. Right now, I'm focused on my base, and so I'm, I want to switch over to the base button here, so that way I make sure I'm making stuff that is, in fact, for a base and not for something else. Okay? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and queue up a food processor, and I'm going to queue up a refrigerator. This will allow me then to start putting perishable items into it, which will then greatly reduce uh, or increase the time in which before it'll spoil, like a refrigerator does. And this is kind of like a combination of a, you know, a, a cooking stove and a medical fabricator. So basically we make all of our food and all of our medical items with this food processor. Okay. The other thing I think I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go ahead and queue up another cargo box because I'm going to actually create separate inputs and outputs. 
because I like to be somewhat organized when I play survival games. I don't like to just have shit all over the place, all in one container. And, you know, as, as you acquire more stuff, you're going to need more containers anyways. And there's, um, you know, so you start out by using these normal containers, but in a little while, you're going to want to move to what are called controllers and extenders. Um, the best way to describe that right now is a controller is kind of like the box. And then extensions are just more boxes that you attach to the box to increase the space. That's really what it boils down to. Uh, but I don't think, are we able to even do those yet? We're, let's get on base here. Um, those are here. Okay. So we have to learn the ammo box next, which we do want to do because then that opens up the controllers. No, I take that back. We could actually learn the container controller um, now uh, with the points. We don't have the points, but we do have it unlocked. So this is what I'm talking about. This guy right here is basically like the main container. And then you can also make these container extensions and you just attach those to the controller and you and each one you add increases the space. So for the base, you have a container controller and then you also have a, an ammo controller the ammo controller is basically the same idea as an ammo box, except for that you can add extensions to it to increase the amount of ammo that you need to hold. Um, in early bases like this, you can the ammo box is more than adequate to hold all the ammo that you would need. But later on, as your base grows and you add more weapons and the attacks uh, on your base increase in frequency and all that sort of thing, you're going to want to switch to an ammo controller and then add some extensions so you can really load this sucker up. Okay. All right. So let's see. We have queued up. What have, what have we done? We've made three things. We've made the food processor, the cargo box, and the fridge. Okay. So because I'm looking in the constructor itself, right, I can see what's in the input and the output, but I can't actually grab it from here. That's why there's padlocks on all of these. So what I need to do is I need to go to the container that the uh, constructor is outputting to. In this case, it's one and the same, but in a minute, we're gonna change that. So I can either get out of the constructor and just open this up, or if I'm in the constructor, I can press this little handy button here, this container access button. And what it does is it opens the container for me without having to first get out of the constructor and go over to it. Why is that super important? Because good grief, Oh, guy, you're just a lazy ass. Get out of there and just walk two feet over here and open this one. I mean, for Pete's sake. Nah, 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 nah. Guys, what if the constructor, what if you have a big ass base with many floors and many levels and many wings and all that sort of thing? Um, And so you have one room that has like three big advanced constructors and you're making all the cool shit in the whole world. But all of your containers for that constructor are like on a different floor in a whole storage container room. In that case... Man, this is going to be useful as all get out because now I can get to that container from here without having to actually walk to that next room to physically access the container. Okay? So, hopefully that makes sense. Now, I'm going to grab the food processor. I'm going to grab the refrigerator. And I'm going to grab this extra cargo box that I made. Where do I want to place this stuff? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to place the food processor right here. And I'm going to turn it around so that it's facing this direction. And I'm going to set it right here. Okay. This is the right direction to face it because these are where all the controls are that I access to make my shit. Right. If you put it this way facing, then you, you've put it the wrong way. Honestly, it doesn't matter. The game doesn't care. It's just an aesthetic thing. Okay. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to take my refrigerator and I'm going to pivot it so it's facing the right direction. And if I right click, the refrigerator has three options. You've got skinny fridge, right? That has a volume capacity of 875. You've got fat fridge, which has a volume capacity of 1.75 thousand storage units. Or you got this little, little kind of glass covered fridge with 875 units, which is the same as this. What am I gonna choose? I'm almost always gonna choose fridge too, because hey, it's got more space and, it, and, it, and it, it, it costs me the same to make. So why not use the more space? 
The only time you might want to use this guy is if space is really at a premium and you don't want a big fat fridge. But in my case, I like fat fridges. So I'm going to set the fat fridge there. The third type of fridge is just an aesthetic thing. Sometimes I'll use that fridge, for example, for, um, you know, for medical stuff, just so I can visibly tell the difference between the food fridge and the medical fridge. But that's all purely just aesthetic stuff. It's not required stuff. Okay, so we put the fat fridge down. Now, the food processor is also a device that requires an input and an output. So what am I going to do? I'm going to open up the food processor, and I'm going to say, hey, food processor, I want you to use the fridge to input and output stuff too. What I can also do, and what I usually will do, maybe a little later on, maybe not immediately, right when I'm first starting my base, is I'll make a second fridge, and I'll have one be an input fridge and one be an output fridge. Maybe a little bit later on, when I'm really starting to, you know, starting to make a snazzy base, I'll make another food processor, and I'll make the second food processor dedicated completely to making medical stuff, and then give it its own input or output fridge. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can have as many or as few as you want. It just depends upon what your goals are for your base. Okay? Now, do we have anything perishable still in here that hasn't already rotted? Let's take a look. <sighs> nope, everything's rotten. <laughs> okay, here's what I do. I like to put food, perishables, and other uh, you know, medical and bio type materials in the fridge, even though some of the things that I'll put in there are, you know, are not perishable. In my mind, it just kind of fits, right? If you're one of those kind of people that don't like the idea of having gross alien tooth right next to your cheeseburger, then have separate fridges. Or if, you know, in the case of an alien tooth, you can put that somewhere else. You don't have to have it in a fridge. But here's the thing about that. You can only have one input device for your food processor, Right. And so if I'm finicky about that and I put my alien teeth in a separate container and everything else that's perishable that I need to make medical in a refrigerator, guess what I don't have in the input? My alien teeth, and I'm going to have to move them over, over later. So buck up, don't be a wuss, and just put all of your same shit in the refrigerator, okay? And that's my advice to you. So I want to move the bio-perishable medical items out of the main container and put them in our refrigerator. One way I can do that, of course, is to put all this stuff in my inventory, then walk over there and put it in physically. But why the hell would I do that when I could do this instead? I'm going to select base in this upper left-hand corner. I'm then going to click the drop-down and select my fridge. And now I can shift-click all of the bio slash perishable slash medical stuff straight on into my fridge and voila we're good to go there it is Wait, except for i can't yeah you can't show the the same thing on the same side at the same time there it is really cool huh now again remember think in bigger terms guys this is a small base everything's right here i just have to walk a couple steps over to get to stuff but later on i might have a bigger base and i might have this stuff spread out all over the place and that's where you're really going to want to take advantage of these little shortcuts to move stuff around okay now We've got another container. I'm going to take this container. I'm going to set it up here. I'm going to right click and choose my favorite style. That is purely up to you. You can choose a different style if you want to. But do remember that the bigger containers can hold more stuff than the smaller containers. I'm going to set this up here. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and press the P key for control panel. You guys are probably getting tired of hearing me say that. But you know what? You're never going to forget that the P key is the key you need to press. So you'll thank me later. You're cursing me now. You'll thank me later. Um, now, what I need to do is what I want to do rather is I want to name these. I want to give them a name that makes a little more sense instead of just container MS 011 blah, 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 blah. OK, here's how we do this. I can't just simply go up to this thing and name it straight up. What I have to do uh, is I have to go into the, the P menu, right? I have to go to devices. And I have to click this little button here that says auto group, because if I don't do that, notice that if I select this container, the first thing is, is from this menu here, it's really hard, if not impossible for me to know which one of these is actually which. Is this the top one or the bottom one? I don't really know. I'd have to actually get into it to tell, but who the hell wants to do that? That's a pain in the ass. Um... So what it, it behooves me to name these in such a way that I know which one's the top or the bottom, or in our case, which one's the input and the output, because that's kind of their main purpose. Okay? 
But I can't do that right now because notice if I select that I don't have any option to name it. So what I have to do is I have to go into devices and I have to click this auto group button and stop. Read that warning. What does it say? It says this will clear your current item names and groups. What does that mean? What that means, guys, is that if you on your base or your vessel at some point in time decide to create custom groups instead of using auto group, and then after you do that, you go in here and you auto group again, it's going to wipe those groups out. Really sucks. I wish the game wouldn't do that. It's bit me in the ass more than I can say, but it's the way the game works. So just be really careful of that. We don't really give a rat's ass about that right now because we're just starting out. We're not messing with custom groups. It doesn't matter. We're going to click OK. Where it's going to matter, like I said later on, is if you create a custom group and put certain things in it, and then you go and auto group, you're going to wipe that out. And you're going to have to recreate it. OK. Um, I don't really want to get into why I would create a custom group other than to just very quickly say that the main reason that people do that in this game is so that they can then apply what's called uh, a special or a custom switch to that group. Real quick example. Let's say, for example, on a spaceship, I have two different types of thrusters. I've got normal thrusters and then I've got jet thrusters, which which I can use to do like an afterburner effect. I might not want to use those jet thrusters or I might not want to have them on all the time because they consume a hell of a lot more power. So what I could do is I could put those jet thrusters in a special group and then assign a switch just to that group and I could turn those off um, and not have them run until I need to actually use them. But in order to do that, I need to create a special group. And, in, and, and if I forget that I did that and I come along later and I auto group this later, why would I do that? Well, because maybe I added something else to the ship. I upgraded it or I changed something on it. Now I need to regroup everything. I'm going to wipe that out. So just be really careful. Rule of thumb, when you're building something and you're going to use custom groups, try and get everything possible that you can on the vessel or the base first. Auto group and then create your custom groups at the very end. That's what happens in a perfect world. That's not what's going to happen in the real world. You're going to wipe it out. You're going to, you know, piss yourself off and have to recreate it. It's going to happen. Just get used to it. But I want you to know the deal. Okay, enough about that. Um, so what are we doing? We're naming stuff. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at this container. I want to set this container to be my input container. And I want to set the bottom container to be my output container. You guys might want to do it the other way around. You might want the bottom container to be the input, and you might want the top container to be the output. That's fine. That's completely up to you. In my case, I like to do the top as the input and the bottom as the output. It doesn't really matter. I suppose one potential reason for that in my brain subconsciously... Wow, look at that. Really beautiful. What is that? Uh, that's a sunrise. This game is so pretty, you guys. It's just amazing. We, we picked a nice little spot for our base, too, didn't we? Cool. Okay, anyway, sidetrack. Um, I'm going to access this container maybe just a little bit more than that container, so it kind of makes sense to have it more at ground level, but it so doesn't matter. It really doesn't at the end of the day. Okay, so how do I name this? I'm going to look at the container. I'm going to make sure my crosshair is at the container, and I'm going to press the P menu for Control Panel, and look what happens here. Not only do I open the control panel, but it also automatically selects the device I'm looking at. That is actually really damn useful because right now, not a big deal. What about later on if we have 500 different devices and containers and, and stuff in our base and we want to change something? Probably the best example of that is lights. I have a capital ship that I built and it's got hundreds of lights on it. It's a huge capital ship. What if I have one light that I want to change something? I might want to change the color or I might want to change the intensity of it or the range. All I have to do is put my crosshair on it, press P, and it's going to automatically select it for me and I can make the change. We probably better eat because our food's in the red here. Let's go ahead and chow down on a couple energy bars. We need to actually make some more of these too. Oh, I should be eating the ones on my toolbar because they're going to go bad. Okay. So I look at the device. What if I wanted to name my food processor? I look at it, I press P, and guess what? It selects the food processor for me, and this is what I'm getting at. Now, because I grouped everything, now I can change the name. 
I don't really want to name the rename the food processor because hell, it's the food processor. What I do want to do is I want to look at this chest. It selects it, and hey, look at that. This it's actually the bottom one in the list, even though it's the top one in actuality. I'm going to click in this little field, and I'm going to just simply type input. You can put anything you want, but you know, up to a certain character limit. I'm not sure what that is. I'm just going to type input, and then I'm going to press enter on my keyboard. I have just now named the top container input. Now I'm going to look at the bottom container. I'm going to press P. And I'm going to click over here, and I'm going to call this output. I'm going to press enter on my keyboard, and I have now named that one that container output. Cool, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the wireless menu by pressing F4. On this side, I'm going to select the base and input. On this side, I'm going to make sure I'm on base and I'm going to select output, which I've already done. Okay. Um, now I'm going to take everything in the output that is really an input component, such as ingots and stone and mechanical components and sathium plates and plant fibers and all of this stuff that's an input. In other words, it's not a finished product. Uh, it's either a raw resource or it's an intermediate product. Right? And I'm going to put all that in the input bin. But all of this stuff, the, this is either, this is finished products. You know, the projectile pistol is, is what you made and you can't make anything more uh, out of that. There are a couple of exceptions to that when it comes to upgrading weapons, but let's not get into that right now. Okay? So, now I'm going to come back to my constructor, and I'm going to change the input to the input container, and I'm going to change the output to, you guessed it, the output container. Okay? And once I've done that, now what I can do when I come back to the base after I've been out salvaging or mining or looting, anything that's an input device or an input item, I should say, a component or a raw resource, I'm going to throw into this bin. And anything that I make in the constructor will end up here in the output bin. Now here's what I do. In the very early game, when I'm first starting out, my output bin also is my general storage bin. But eventually, this guy is going to fill up. And when it does, I'm going to make yet another container and set that down somewhere else, and I'm going to name it General Storage or whatever makes sense. So that way, you know, surplus stuff or whatever that I don't need in the output bin, I can then start storing over there. And believe me, you know, you will start filling up on stuff. And remember, too, you have a volume limit and you have um, a mass limit. Well, no, I don't think you actually have a mass limit on base, control, uh, base containers. Don't think you do. Uh, but you do have a volume limit, and you'll be surprised, you know, how quickly you can run out of this, especially if you put 89 concrete blocks inside of it. Okay? Um, why not, old guy, then just put, like, 20 containers down all at once and be done with it? Well, you got to keep in mind that each time you put something down on your base, it's going to use CPU points. And remember, we have those CPU limits, so you can't just go hog wild with it. And besides, if you're going to do that, you're really going to be better off using... Um, controllers and extensions instead of, you know, 10 different actual storage bins. So this is really what we want to do in the early game, but eventually, you know, we're going to start using extenders, but that is for another episode. Guys, we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. What we need to do now is we need to get some more points, uh, more skill points, or XP, so that we can then make um, the large constructor. We want, we want to get this as soon as possible because for the same reason, this can is even more capable and can do more cool shit than the small constructor can. We're going to always keep this guy because he's going to be useful for making certain types of things for us, but we're going to want the large constructor to really start advancing in the game. And until, you know, and, and before we can do that, we've got to get some more points. So we're going to go in here, we're going to look at our stats, and we are 69% of the way to the next level. And once we hit that next level, we're going to get some more points, and then we can learn the large constructor. And we should have enough resources, thanks to our early, earlier mining efforts, to actually make that large constructor. Okay? How do I level? Go out and pick a bunch of plants, go out and, and kill shit, cut trees down, mine stones, that sort of thing, and you'll you'll level up. All right. Wow, that was a lot of stuff. <laughs> 
So we still have things to do in here, of course. We need to put some doors down. We need to put a light up here. We need to do some basic decoration of the base. Once that's done, we're going to work on our farming wing, which is going to go out that side. And we're going to work on our landing pad, which is going to go out the back door. And those are things that are coming up. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We went a little bit longer, but probably not long enough to, for me to split it up. This is just going to be a little bit longer one. Um, and we'll uh, we'll keep working on, on those things that I just mentioned in the next episode. Remember what I said at the beginning of this episode. I might not be able to continue pumping out you know, one or multiple videos every single day, but we will keep working on this. It might be every day or every other day, but I'll keep working on it until we eventually get to the end of this awesome tutorial series, whenever the hell that actually happens. I'm not even sure myself, but we're having fun, and hopefully you guys are learning, and we'll just keep going at it. All right, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.